Hello and welcome to SPS Unscripted, a podcast between two friends who have never met, living in opposite ends of the UK, connected by a rare neurological disease called Stiff Person Syndrome. Our journey to soul sisterhood started via messages, supportive messages, which has now grown into a wonderful journey of empathy, encouragement and learning to live the best version of ourselves. Join your hosts, L and M, for some cosy chit-chat, pour yourself a drink, make yourself comfortable as we discuss all things life. Hello and welcome back to SPS Unscripted Podcast. Today we are discussing travel, be that day trips or further afield on planes, trains and automobiles. But with SPS, amongst other health conditions, this can require some fine tuning to prevent us scrambling like the McAllisters from home alone at the last minute. Um, So before we touch upon this topic... Um, perhaps offering some pointers and also giving our own personal experiences. As always, Lindsay will bring us into the podcast with some with calm and an inspirational quote for today. So good morning, lovely Lindsay. What do you have good for us morning. today? Good <laughs> morning. Good morning. Okay, my little bit of inspiration mm-hmm. for today. To travel and to see the world truly is a blessing. But if you are unable to leave home soil, whether it be because of health, wealth, or even fear, know your time will come when it is right for you to fly above the clouds, sail the ocean blue, and hear the clickety-clack of the train track too. So smile, my friend, and let your heart know. If you just close your eyes gently, you can transport yourself anytime, whenever you want to go in this beautiful, incredible, perfect world. To use one's imagination is a gift. And may I ask who that's by? Oh, that's by Lindsay Clark. I thought so. (laughs) Our one and only Lindsay. Um, That's absolutely beautiful and very inspirational and actually brought up some points that I hadn't thought to bring to the podcast today um, in my wee wee suitcase in my head. Um, (laughs) Oh, you got to love me, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, I do, I do. You do? <laughs> so, we've been speaking about travelling. We've been talking recently about, you know, what are plans for the summer, but also um, remembering to press pause and how important that is in remembering to press pause. But it can be difficult if there are barriers such as health. Um, Mm -hmm. But as you rightfully say as well, uh, wealth as well, you know, finances, um, particularly Mm -hmm. in the current climate, um, can be a tricky one as well. And so this podcast is not just about traveling, you know, um, abroad. It it can also be about traveling for the day. Going out for a day can require sometimes just as much planning and anticipation um, and fine tuning as as a longer journey can. Mm. Yeah, I have quite quite a list, even just popping out, you know, with, on the weekends to the mountains, you mm-hmm. know, that's where I go. Um, and the last words that are always uttered before we go through the front door is, have you got Max? Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Max is, you know, the, the oxygen mm-hmm. cylinder. Um, now, why is it called Max? Uh, <laughs> I think... To make your equipment friendly, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because in early diagnosis days and symptom onset, when these quite serious pieces of equipment come into your life, it, it's scary stuff. So Max was always my IVIC um, infusion um, machine in the hospital, and the the O2, um, you know, that's in a little uh, rucksack carry case. Um, so that's the last words when we go out through the door, but but also knowing that you have all preparation done, tick, 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 because I carry quite a bit of equipment with, with me. So for just going out for a couple of hours, it's 
the, the same kind of thing that I need with me, the whole shebang. And obviously then if we were going for longer, then um, then there's, there's all your, your other bits and pieces for overnight stays or even if you're going for a week or so. But um, I mean, it's different for everyone, is, isn't it? Because hmm. I mean, hmm. when, when we decided to talk about this topic, it came to mind, even the changeover of vehicle last year mm-hmm. from a car to a van and the effects that that had on, on my little heart mm-hmm. of, am I ready for this changeover? Because it's almost like saying, you know, goodbye to part of your life and yeah. here comes another one, you know, another part of the chapter, so to speak. But when you're weighing up um, the conversations we had last year um, of um, freedom, and like you said, okay, Lindsay, will it bring you more freedom? Mm-hmm. Will you be able to do more and go more places? And will your body be able to tolerate more by a change of vehicle? And, you know, after much discussion, it was, yes, mm-hmm. the, you know, because the, the doodle bugs, the electric wheelchair will be with me, the manual wheelchair will be with me. But a big thing for me also and, um, you know, let's talk about it openly because mm-hmm. it is what it is. But with SPS, bladder spasms, mm-hmm. they're a thing. They're oh, real. Yeah. And they, they can keep you housebound if you're not prepared, um, if, if that is something that you're, you know, you're experiencing. So we even, you know, carry a portaloo mm-hmm. with us. And the difference that has made because there is space mm-hmm. in the van for this portaloo that I am able to leave my home earlier on in the day because these bladder spasms, they start, yeah. you know, early in the morning and then they can keep going for, you know, up to like six hours afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, it's, it's quite crazy. But again, having those tools with you, whether it be just for the day or whether it be for, for a longer, you know, a longer period of mm-hmm. time. So, um, and, and then obviously there's things like, you know, you, you, your stick, if you're carrying a stick with yeah. you, medication, you know, yeah. if you, you, you're taking medication, it's all planning, planning, yeah. planning. Yeah. I can no longer go out through the door, you know, running and flying by the seat of my pants of, you know, it's okay, it's okay, I, I have my, I have my handbag. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Gone are, mm. gone are those days, but um. It, it's okay. It's okay because as we always talk about, um, there's always another way. And, and with that, life continues. It continues to grow and it continues to grow beautifully. It's just finding finding yeah. that way, isn't it? It is finding that way. And I can't remember who the, it was. I'd read a quote um, a long time ago, which um, was, to fail to plan would be foolish. Um, so oh. even when you know you think, or let's be sporadic, there still has to be a plan in in some respect, you know, um, mm. it, for for us. So um, for you know um, when health challenges come in into place, we, we do need to have a more. Actually, you need to have a plan, but it has to be in flex. It has to have flexibility. That that's the 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 irony of um um with with them um, particularly SPS is we can we can be methodical and we can plan to the days long but we still have to be flexible in that plan as in we might have to turn around if it's a day trip, um, but you know for example um if you know even going out on a day trip for me we have a a, um, a, f- a family member who has a, a quite a severe food allergy so that's something that has become natural to us for. For, for nearly 15 years um, and then I'm celiac so um, that's something else so we always know that we have to bring our own food in case we go somewhere and the only option is chips <laughs> you know um, and, and I tell you what when we were in Paris um, and we were trying to find somewhere safe to eat a lot of the food um, some of the foods that were looking safe for this family member um, upon, you know, we trying to get some further information with regards to um, what allergens were used in the kitchen, I would say to you, never be afraid to, to, you know, to be that awkward customer. You're not, you're keeping yourself safe. And it's important because allergy awareness is still not where it should be in Europe. Um, 
And, you know, it, it's much further ahead than when we initially started out with, with my child and people would hand you, and you know, um, or they would say, oh, it's OK, we can just take that off the plate. And you're like, you know, no, that's not how it works. You know, even just that being in contact with his food, he could be gone, you know. Um, that's how serious it is, and we carry an EpiPen, etc. But I go, I digress. Going back to Paris, um, one of the things we were looking at, and um, on the plate that, that, with regards to trying to order a meal, and thankfully this waiter spoke very good English, and um, we know we were we were saying about the seriousness of the the food allergy, and he actually then said, actually, we use peanut oil to fry. Um, a lot of our foods now with peanut oil if there's anyone listening who who's aware who has allergy awareness they will know that the protein comes out of the peanut oil um and there are, it, it's said that some people can actually you can actually eat food that's been fried in peanut oil um with a peanut allergy now this is not me saying this this is a general loose term please no avoid at all costs is my my advice um and, and upon speaking to my, you know, my 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 um, my child's allergist, he's like, yeah, but who's who's going to, you know, try that? Who's even going to think? Well, I might try it, you know, and place my my child or myself in danger. So by no means am I saying that, you know, the protein's missing, so it's a okay. Absolutely not. We are we we are very much um, there is there is no me contains. Um, because there's several um, there's several uh, nuts as well. There's pine nuts as well, which is not a nut as such as a seed um, that, he, that he can't have as well. Um, so, you know, so... And with the celiac, um, so it, it's another issue. So we always make sure that we have food um, in our bags, extra snacks. Mm. And then another thing that... I, for, um, what, so, sorry, sorry, no, so, sorry Anne. I was, I was just going to say that even for those who don't have celiac, with SPS, that that tummy sensitivity, oh, yeah. you know, to to foods, makes it very very difficult because, you know, when you're you're out and about and eating, and and that is a really really good point, of you know prepping and and taking your own food mm-hmm. because many a time I've got caught short mm-hmm. and we're somewhere that, that we all need to eat, and there is just nothing mm-hmm. that my stomach would be able to tolerate and i and i think for a lot of people with sps those those um stomach sensitivities they tend to come hand in hand they even do, yeah. with without a diagnosis of of of, of celiac it's, yeah. quite, it's quite strange isn't it yeah i i know that i mean i know that i've said to you that i've kind of stepped away from medical journaling <laughs> we know like reading <laughs> too much up but i i have what I have um, kind of dived into, or um, kind of you know scanned across, is this gluten sensitivity and gluten ataxia, um, which can be can, you know there is a, quite a strong connection, and and I've noticed that a lot of patients are tested for it, um, mm. along you know with other um, other tests, um, so not necessarily always looking for celiacs, but looking for even just a, a sensitivity to to gluten. Um, but the, the the other thing from that, absolutely, Lindsay, I, I can go out and have something to eat that I've had on numerous occasions. And then on a, another separate occasion, it can turn my stomach and I feel it turning mm-hmm. it. And I'm I'm burning from my stomach up. And then, you know, let, if you want to be honest, yep, you're thinking, where is the nearest toilet? You know, yeah. and it's embarrassing. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh, my Lord, you know, I, I and and it can last a good day or two. And then I said to you, even last night, I was having palpitations coming off my gallbladder because I think you know, I was tired yesterday as well. So, you know, mm-hmm. been just been very careful and mindful of, of what you're putting into your body. But the other thing I was going to bring up was, you know, I've mentioned this before. I'm not um, diabetic, but I do have hypoglycemia as a result of chronic fatigue and you often see me with the you know my smoothie and my plan before I come on um to podcast in the morning is I I struggle to eat in the morning but I make sure I do because hitting those fast acting sugars and it's not good because you're you know you're hitting your ups and downs but that's another thing as well for me is making sure I have food for if 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 we're going as a family for both myself and my child um and I also have fast acting sugars Mm-hmm. Um, and making sure I have enough, taking more um, than what I need, because you can always bring it home. Yeah. 
you know so that's what we so that's just something that's, that comes automatically if as soon as i go out the door for example regardless of even talking about travel at the moment so I, as you see you talk about your doodle bug and max my mm. in my bag i must have my ventilant inhaler i've been chronic asthmatic since i've been four and a half i have missed trains because i've walked out the house without my inhaler and i think no i cannot i cannot possibly go anywhere because my chest can just turn so quickly um mm. so i always have my inhaler um i always have now the bm kit uh i have my fast acting sugars and i have my long you know like um, like slow acting sugars like my carbs and some protein um i will also have my pep which is something that i introduced to you which was a you know it's a respiratory device to help with them um, you know, clearing if there's the mucus or, you know, um, phlegm that you're really struggling because I do struggle with my chest. But it also helps with hyperventilation with the dysfunctional breathing. I That has to be in my bag too. And the my my rescue, me, my medication for SPS, it, the diazepam, I know I need mm-hmm. that, um, particularly for the respiratory issues and the swallow. Uh, so that's in the bag too. In fact, I've got my bag here. Let, let, me, let me get Mrs... <laughs> Mary Poppins, wait till we see, dear, what I've got in here. So you can see, <laughs> I'll show you just now, Lindsay, I've got my crackers. <laughs> so I've got my, my gluten-free crackers. I've got my meds. Tissues for the sinuses, ladies and gentlemen, as you know me. And then I have my pep. It's there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have my clinic wipes. I have my, my wee individually wrapped clinic wipes because that's another issue, being immunocompromised, which I'm not. Um, anymore, but I know many of our listeners will be, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but the clinic wipes as well for food allergies, and so we were at the cinema at the weekend, and and we're wiping down all the chairs before we sit down. That's a nor- That's been like that since my child's been diagnosed. We wipe everything down, and then whoever has the biggest coat that goes over the chair, um, so that he's hardly touching any surfaces. So there you go. We've went off topic, but. <laughs> Let's get back to the travelling lady. Going for an overnight, let, let's let's start with even... So we've spoken roughly about going on a day out, um, finite resources as in energy resources, knowing when to mm-hmm. stop before somebody pulls that plug. You know we're still looking for that person, you know? I know. See if you're we, listening. We are yeah, if you're listening, <laughs> don't worry, we're, we're on to you. You know, so stopping see, before. Yeah, see, see, and when when you're speaking of the person pulling the plug, yeah. or wh- whoever, whatever pulls the plug, mm-hmm. um, and 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 chatting about an overnight stay, when you and I, I know that the whole chronic fatigue mm. element, um, is is big, um, hand in hand with SPS for both of us. I, I appreciate that, but I know for me, um, for for instance. Last November, there was a, a hospital trip due. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, a four-hour journey from from wh- where I am, and I cannot. My body cannot tolerate that level of traveling, then going to an appointment, and then traveling back. Mm-hmm. Um, people who do that in one day, um, hats off to you, mm-hmm. or even one overnight stay that's incredible Mm -hmm. because for me i have to do that travel broken up through throughout the day Mm -hmm. so it's not one complete run um so a four-hour journey for instance would take me you know maybe six eight Mm -hmm. hours because there's all those stops in between because for for my body to be still too long it goes stiff and rigid Mm -hmm. for it to be moving too much it causes stiffness and and rigidity Mm -hmm. and and freeze mode etc um there's like trying to find this this fine balance but not just from you know the the actual physical the chronic fatigue Mm -hmm. um with that all tied in it's a lot for for my body so what would become a a a day trip Mm -hmm. for um someone who doesn't have these these health challenges for myself becomes at least three nights away because i travel up through that one day stay over try and get some sort of 
energy together to be able to attend an appointment so my, my head is switched on to be able to ask to listen at a consultation um but the, the problem is the more fatigued i get the the, the more physical symptoms of sps oh, yeah. kick off so when you're at these medical appointments for, for my body i've already done that huge journey i'm flawed mm -hmm. and and it is just so so hard mm -hmm. it is so hard to be able to sit there with a professor and try and speak and converse and absorb and then have all these tests done and then with all of that then then it's back to the hotel room and then is more rest you you, you can't go and say well oh, i'm having a few days away for, mm -hmm. for a break mm -hmm. that doesn't happen the whole time is spent in the hotel room resting yeah. to then try and make the journey back mm -hmm. back home um, and I wonder, am I an oddity, you know, is it just me that needs to, to, to really take that time to just be so slow and rest, rest, rest. I'm not talking sleep, I'm talking like my body needs that quiet, in complete silence. It's the decompression. St still, yeah. stillness, it just, mm -hmm. it cannot tolerate the go 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 mm -hmm. even on a slow level it's like yeah it's really really weird how sensitive sps presents you know with yeah. with, with within me um even a, a day appointment locally you think how that affects you um you know when oh, you that go floors me yeah you, you know and then you're back home and you're needing that rest and you're like Lindsay, i'm i'm done yeah but you know, we were talking about travel, just that four hour travel somewhere, mm -hmm. what what that does. Yeah. Um, and, and how does one deal with, you know, deal with that? Yeah, I, I think I, I have bounced around in your conversation um, with where I've been. So um, I will speak about, um, you know, where I was um, five, six years ago and managing to go to Japan. Um, but you know, behind that camera, as I've spoken, you know, of all the smiles, there was somebody trembling and having to sit down a lot um, and then would be waking up un unable to regulate my temperature um, and, you know, startling awake and just feeling absolutely broken and thankfully was working on sticky Japanese rice, Gohan, um, because that that's, you know, and, and God bless my mother-in-law because whenever we were staying with her, God bless her. She was cooking. She was up, you know, um, and it was a wonderful detox. I must say to you that the benefits of eating as they do, I felt so much healthier and my exercise tolerance started to build up. But I, I did say to you that when we had went to Disneyland, um, that there there came a point where the cat, everything was closing after the parades. We'd went for a drink. And I genuinely thought they're going to have to close the cafe with me. And we were staying in the hotel on site. And I just, uh, you know, I just kept looking at my husband, shaking my head. My kids were still, they were, they were in the highs of being in Disney and chatting and laughing. And, you know, and I was able to keep that facade. Um, and I, I still recall that and how, you know, if I'd known where I am now, I thought that, well, this will pass and you'll be all right. Whereas I've, you know, come forward well I'm older as well you know that that's a, a reality but going back to where I was is that two years ago now when we'd nipped down south it wasn't you know it wasn't long after we had we had connected and um I wasn't very well and it was supposed to be my son and my my husband my eldest son and my husband going away mm. um but my husband was looking at me thinking there's no way you could manage a home on your own especially with the younger two and I said well why don't all of you go and I'll just stay with the dog and we'll get a dog walker but my husband was looking thinking you're not well enough and I remember before embarking upon that trip trying to do journeys out to see my mum who was then about 45 minutes away and speaking to you as though there was bees stinging me and my body mm -hmm. was trembling and it was like a static hub and um, I could hardly hold myself upright in the car and lying back was even too much. Um, but trying to get my body um, desensitised to a 
car journey um, and on our way down south, as I said to you, we stopped off for a, a, you know, a, a comfort break and I mobilised to the bathroom. And at this stage, I, I was in, really in the throes of these vestibular events. So there was the disembarkment. You know, you come off and it's like you're on, um, you're on a, um, an escalator and you're walking you know, in the opposite direction of the escalator when you and this yeah. disembarkment is it's horrible and everything's even when I speak just now I can feel like everything's swaying side to side and the world does not look as it as it does to the the inverted commas normal normal human being. Um and I, I got to the bathroom and then as I was coming out of the services, you know, we were still in the throes of COVID as well, you know, the COVID numbers being high. Um and that was an anxiety. But I reached the, the, the exit of the, the doors of the um, services and I couldn't move. There was no floor beneath me. My body was rigid. And mm. I just remember my two youngest sons looking over and I had to try and keep a look of, you know, it's OK. And I had to get them to come and help me back to the car. And I didn't drink the rest of that journey because I thought I can't do that again. And we had another four hours. And I need, I do need a lot of fluids. That's just part of me. And by the time we reached our destination, my body was in such a state of the vibration of the car, you know, just allowing family life to flow, the music, whatever, you know, just allowing it to flow so that my heart was happy. But by the time we reached the, the hotel, I actually said to my husband, I don't think I can get out of this car. I don't, mm. I don't think I'm going to be able to walk. And I think, I think he was looking at me as if like, I don't know if I can sling you over my shoulder, you know, I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed. Um, he probably would have weighed him down, he would have never recovered. But by the time I got to the hotel, I was trembling and I stayed in the hotel for the full time we were down. They went out and I stayed with uh, Monty <laughs> um, and there was a wee bit of sadness around, oh mum, and I'm like, honestly, I'm absolutely fine leave me here um I've got Lindsay <laughs> yeah we had you I said I've yeah, got Lindsay yeah. I will you know and I said I've got you know my mum to phone and my you know my other girlfriends um but actually I think most of the time I just slept and rested and um overdone it in the makeup when they came back there were <laughs> you know there was there was a lot of makeup on when they came back so that I looked okay um and I didn't go out for a meal um, my food was brought back to me in the room. Yeah, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was a really difficult, it was a really florid um, SPS flare-up and vestibular flare-ups going on, whatever was going on there. And it did, it was quite, you know, it was a wee bit worrying. I was thinking, mm -hmm. is, is this it? But then it wasn't it, you know. So then where did I go from there? Well, I have been away since then. But the list is getting bigger of what I'm taking with me. And now you talk about Max. I need to take my nebulizer with me. I need my vent, you know, the Ventolin. I need my um, salines for vapor. And then I always have always done this because um, I have a child who's chronic asthmatic as well as myself. We have a rescue pack. So um, my old GPs um, before we moved, they always gave me steroids and the one antibiotic my body can tolerate now because okay. I've been allergic okay. to everything now. So I have one, one an antibiotic that will cover the, the throat, the urine or the chest. <laughs> um, so I always have that and that's my backup. Um, so I never, ever travel without that. Um, and for a while there, Lindsay, as you know, even going out to visit my mum, I had that, that in my back my car you know my husband driving the the nebulizer because of the flu um and my mm. chest still been quite unstable so that, that the list gets longer as to what but it, a lot of the time i don't need it but it's it's a reassurance of knowing it's there you're going to be okay if anything it's there so this you know uh over the summer we, we've not went abroad since covid and it's something i think that we are planning to do possibly next year and I'm anticipating it and I am a bit apprehensive but let's take a step back you know we have summer plans and um already uh, you know I'm, I'm making my list um I'm, I'm you know gently starting to put things aside you know so that it doesn't all become this one 
hub of everybody having to pack because I know that, that would just sap my energy mm. you know making sure yeah. everyone's got everything um food and you know just everything that everybody needs so just doing it in, in like compartmentalizing it helps me um because as you're saying I know that my body might actually be struggling on that journey the frequent need to you know quite a sense to bladder not such as yourself but quite a, a weak weakness in my bladder at the moment mm. um and then getting down there I am floored and and one of the things that I, I like about UK travel is taking my own pillow because if I have my own pillow I, I can I can actually go into sleep better so that's something that I do. I take my own pillow. I sleep with my own pillow wherever I am. And it seems to allow me to, to just settle into the bed because these are things as well, like a different bed. Mm. Yeah. 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 And then that, I see this, like, you know, getting things out of a case or things. They, that agitates me a little. I feel all over the place with that, you know, like. Um, what, what do you mean? Like, unpacking? Like unpacking. I, I never fully unpack. Um, no, I get no. I get quite <laughs> agitated. Do you do that too? I get quite agitated, yeah. and I know people that immediately unpack, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know what to do, <laughs> so I get really uncomfortable. Um, it's bizarre. I don't know what it is, and, and the other thing, let, let's talk about clothing. I speak to you about this quite frequently. Is, is my need for cotton um, because mm, of the yes. you know heat sensitivity. Um, but also, you know, for people that are immunocompromised, uh, Lindsay, and I'm not sure where you stand with um, post-cell transplant, if you have to still be very careful in the sun. Um, is that the case for you? Have you got... I, I don't know, to, to be honest with you. I know since the transplant, I've lost the, the pigmentation mm -hmm. in my skin. Um, so I am, I mean, I was very pale beforehand, mm -hmm. but now I'm, you know, extremely... Extremely, extremely pale, and that that's something that I I you know I don't mm. I don't know. It's not something that anybody has spoken to me oh, about. Okay. I mean, I know I had that problem didn't I last year with the um the the, the speck on my eye and what's yeah. going on there. So I I know I need to be careful with regards to um the sun and my eyes now, um to make sure that doesn't become anything nasty. But yeah, I I I don't know. I'm I mean sun cream. I need to use religiously because literally if the sun looks at me I go I, I burn oh me like too right me too. bright red painful bright red so whether you know that's I don't know something that that I you know I should know about but clearly <laughs> I don't I, I yeah. know nothing about that I mean I'm a typical Celt as you know um, so, um, <laughs> and I live in Scotland where, um, you know, my, my friend who lives in New Zealand, I think there's, um, they, they call it the, 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 is it the country or the land of the long cloud? Well, in Scotland, it's the land of the forever cloud. Um, and Billy Conley is very funny when he said that when he brought his kids who were raised in America over and they're like, why is the sky so low, daddy? <laughs> it's the clouds, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one day in in, in uh, Scotland, Scottish summer, and I I am I am uh, burnt, and I take heat stroke, so I always have my hat, I have my glasses. I'm very jacket oh, very stylish. Just to add that to the podcast, Factor Fifty is is my go to. It has always been my go to. It is even if it's waterproof, it is religiously applied several times throughout the day just because of my, my Celtic colouring. I've always been like that as a child, but now when I was immunocompromised, like you're saying, my skin's paper thin now, you know, um, so I have to be very careful. The other thing as well, um, somebody, I, I noticed somebody on one of the forums was speaking about the sun, and there's a thing called a rash vest for adults. So in Bowdoin, this is, again, this is, I'm sure you can buy them from other places, but I'd invested in a, you know, you can get the wee UV suits for kids, but these are more like um, these are for women, and it's just the top with the kind of bikini bottoms or you know the shorts, um, and it's a rash vest. It's supposed to cover you up to I think f factor forty. I got burnt through that with factor fifty and that on in the south of France. Oh, 
at the beach. I had my feet soaking in ice. (laughs) They were so swollen. So that's the, if anyone's thinking, what will I do? There is rash vests out there for ladies that are quite attractive. They just look like a long, almost like a long cycle top, you know, they're quite feminine um, for the beach. Uh, So yeah, that's something I have to be very careful with. And then it's humidity is another thing that's a killer. And I think that's typical for neurological patients, um, Mm. you know, is humidity and heat. Um, So this is where the fluids come in. You know, I have to go with that big, like, three litre tankard on my back. (laughs) (laughs) Like aqua woman, never mind aqua man. It's like aqua woman um, with a big straw attached. No, I'm only joking, but I'm constantly needing fluids. Um, but when you speak mm-hmm. as well of the the humidity, the change in the yeah. temperature, how that affects us, you know, so whether you'll go into a warmer climate or a cooler climate, um, you, you know, be prepared for that shift yeah. in your body, in your joints, in your muscles, um, you know, how your body's functioning and how it's going to be. So be prepared, as you say, with either sun, you know, sunscreen and um, Sh- less shoes. clothing. Um, yeah, yeah, or, or more clothing, or yeah. um, and as you say, with uh, shoes and and things. Um, I have a variety of, of shoes in the doodle bug because yeah. my as as you you know if if you've listened to it to previous podcasts, my capability on my legs will be you know I'm either in a wheelchair mm-hmm. or I'm 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 hanging onto my hubby or there's a stick in there or you know I'm shuffling around or what have you, and depending on what I have on my feet can affect oh yeah the, the, the you know how long i can be on my legs for or whether my legs are moving at all sometimes i mean my shoes I've, I've had for like for forever i cannot remember the last time i bought new shoes so i'm just sifting through the same pairs over and over again mm-hmm. but isn't it strange how one day you can stand and walk in a pair of shoes that you've had for like five years and you try and do it again and your body's like, no. Well, I had, <laughs> <No>. yeah, <laughs> I had that recently because I bought new trainers um, because, I, you know, my exercise tolerance, please God, is building up a little. And I, I bought new trainers, as I said to you, and I was I was at vestibular physio last week. Um, and I said to her, I popped these trainers on and the world was a full different place. And it was like, oh, mm-hmm. hold on there, Asics. <laughs> You know, I didn't know this was going to be feeling like this. So that's another thing, you know, maybe if, if you are getting shoes, maybe just break them in, get them, you know, and, and just, you know, trying to become familiar with them. But it can change from day to day. So I'm like Imelda Marco when I go on holiday. And I remember popping a post up on Facebook once where there was like a gazillion pair of shoes in front. And it was the same in my... My, my boys were younger they had shoes for different occasions and my husband would go with like one pair of shoes <laughs> much to my annoyance I'm like that's never enough um and I remember popping this post up and saying I know what you're all thinking it's not enough pair of shoes I'm <laughs> 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 just going for a week away um but now yeah it's funny Lindsay because footwear is incredibly important for me as well and and for keeping my body cool in in warm weather as well um is you know trying to just i have certain sandals that i wear um they are probably needing replaced but um like that they they fit perfectly and they're comfortable and my body's my foot's cup you know my my mind and, and foot are connected thinking these are fine these are good and i feel safe in these um the other thing i was going to mention there actually when you spoke of humidity let me give you a laugh um so on our flight, one of our flights to Japan, and uh, we arrive in Japan, and there's all these beautiful, delicate, dainty little Japanese women. And <laughs> here's the Scot um, who, you know, 14 hour flight is puffing up. You know, you know, the bags of Chris, anything that we had were all up like a balloon. Never mind them, I was like that. I have curly hair. My hair was about three times the size. And I honestly think they thought Hagrid had arrived in Tokyo. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was like, whoa, I'm feeling a bit puffy here. You know, it was like Aunt Petunia with things start to pop as I was getting off the plane. And I'm thinking, oh, holy smoke, get me somewhere cool with with, uh, air conditioning and what have you. Um, 
So humidity is a massive thing for me and since SP SPS has become very um, present in my life, it's something that my body does struggle with, is humidity. Not so much the high heat, but the humidity. It can cause my, okay. this, with the vestibular, my head is banging, my balance is off, uncontrollable sweating and then going freezing cold, um, yeah. swelling up, um, you know, like twice my size. So... I, I actually have a yukata, which is like a Japanese, um, it's like a summer kimono. It almost looks like a dressing gown, but it's got, you know, the lovely the lovely um, sleeves. And it has air in between. Um, it's got like a hole so you can actually slip your hands, your arms through, and it's almost sleeveless, um, but it's still maintaining dignity. And it's pure cotton, and I live in the high... Um, numbers in Scotland, maybe those two days <laughs> that we were fortunate to have, <laughs> um, when everyone starts barbecuing and, and, and washing the rugs and everything. You know, the Scots are crazy, so everyone else in the good days are like, we'll go off and do this. The Scots are like, right, everything that's not been able to get out over the winter or we've not been able to deep clean, get it out in that washing line, and everyone in Scotland has, oh, <laughs> I'm kidding you not, all the woolens and anything, all the trainers, everything's washed. The machines are a flurry in Scotland for those two days. And I know any Scots listening will be like, yeah, that's true. And and there's a there's an unspoken rule that nobody is allowed to post anything about barbecues on Facebook or anything because that's when the rain comes. So everyone's <laughs> like, don't. There's, there's posts a flurry saying, don't even post anything. And we mean it. <laughs> so there's that, you know, you can just, you know, everyone's just delicately bringing out their barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> like shh you know um but yeah so Lindsay we're off on a tangent here here we go again you and I were you know we're never on topic we're never we never are I think that's mainly my fault so we've spoken about food being prepared <laughs> do, do you know what <laughs> oh you make me smile <laughs> do you know another wee trick that I do and I learned this from a, a very dear friend was never to pack all your medication in the one bag if you're going on international travel. So I, I make sure I have some of my medication in my handbag and then I have it in sep separate bags so that if one of those bags goes missing, I've got medication. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. So that is one thing. The other thing as well is having a letter from your doctor. And I know I'm not been condescending, but maybe these are things that somebody's thinking that this is my first time. I'm really scared. What do I do? I always we always have a letter to carry EpiPens, but I also ha I also take my original first letter from my diagnosis um, with me abroad because some people can be funny with you going through with diazepam or if some people yeah. are on midazolam etc. Mm -hmm. and they're controlled drugs. So having that letter in with your passport. Um, the the other thing um, that I have, as I say, is my rescue pack. If you want speak to your GP because we always go with steroids and antibiotic and we always ask for extra inhalers um, in case an, an inhaler can fall out your pocket and you're snookered so yeah. you've got that backup that for me the other thing was um, I've noticed that people have spoken about um, they've been asking recently about insurance a lot of people are not aware that you have insurance through your bank Okay. Some people are not aware of that, and I we weren't aware of that. Um, and actually, when I was calling up my bank for a quote, they're like, "Actually, you have insurance. You just need to add on for yourself and the child with peanut allergy." And it was a small token at that time of about thirty pounds. And then you know you have your your UK insurance card that's free that you apply for, and um, because we're no longer part of the the EU, are we? If you're if you're living in the UK, so that's another thing. You know, that when I said to my neurologist, we want to go here, she's like, nope, you're not stable enough. Do not go anywhere. Um, when we visited her three months later, she's like, you're stable. Whatever you want to go, but make sure you've got plenty of insurance, just yeah. in case. Um, and that's an added cost, but you know, if you've got that in the back of your mind, I think it takes away the anxiety. The other thing was as well, uh, was yeah, like investing in a good hat. You know I love a Tilly hat. You know what I'm like with my Tilly hats. I, I love them. They I, I they're worth every they're worth every penny. You know when you get that horrible sweaty feeling in your head? You don't get that with a Tilly hat. Um I messaged you, didn't mm -hmm. I, a couple of weeks ago and said, I almost bought a Tilly hat then. Yeah, was... <laughs> and um yeah. and you were like 
yeah, yeah, I got these. Mm-hmm. And there you were with all your photos. In your it's like chick, 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 chick. Yeah. Yeah, I love my Tilly hats. Um, the other thing was not being afraid to wear a mask. Um, now, I've been wearing masks long before COVID came in to play. And, um, you know, when you go to Tokyo, everywhere, everyone's wearing masks. And I know there's a debate over people with masks because of COVID. But I was wearing masks long before COVID was a thing. A, for hype because of my dysfunctional breathing and hyperventilation. B, somebody sneezes and I'm in full-blown asthma attack, chest infection. Also, some smells, uh, the sensitivity to smells are an issue for me with SPS. And particularly going, if you're in London, going in those undergrounds and the fumes, I like, can't get a breath. So I always, pop, always had a wee mask that would pop on. And for pollen as well, if pollen counts were high, I'd pop my mask on. And See, uh, yeah. isn't it strange how that really helps you? Whereas for me, to put mm-hmm. something over my face, a mask on my face, causes my chest to spasm almost yeah. straight away. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that strange? It is. Do you know, it's a funny thing, Lindsay. I can resonate with that because when I am in an asthma attack, when my chest, I'm really struggling, you don't touch me, you don't come near me, you don't tell me how to breathe. You don't mm. tell me that um, going outside is worse than being inside. And this is something that I've learned because not only do I have asthma, that I've learned how to, you know, I've had some really what's the word I would look for? Some close shaves with chest infections with asthma. Um, You know, uh, there's been quite a few dangerous um, situations. But then there's the the laryngospasm and the dysfunctional breathing. And then you bring in SPS and the the truncal rigidity. You know, I'm a respiratory um, consultant's nightmare. Nobody knows what to do with me with, you know, um, in fact, I've said to you that I can't have operations because respiratory have said nope because of the synapsing and what have you. But anyway, sorry. So when someone says, you know, approaches someone who has a respiratory issue or condition and they try and tell you what to do, you're like, no, I know my chest and I know how to work this. So if someone tried to put a mask over me in those moments, I actually probably, and I'm not a violent person, I probably (laughs) give them a good left hook because I'm in panic mode, you know, and I'm like, get away, do not touch. You know, I know what I'm doing with my breathing. So I, I appreciate that. And God rest my dad. He wouldn't have tolerated a mask either with his COPD. Mm. So I think it's just a case of doing what serves you. What serves you. Isn't it? I mean, I find even sometimes when I'm out and I'm wearing the mask, suddenly I feel it's it's sticking to my mouth and I can't breathe and I have to pull it away regulate my breathing and and I'm okay but for me it offers some feedback it does offer some some feedback for the hyperventilation so I I think you do what suits you but if you're one of the things you know if you are immunocompromised and you are traveling on the plane um I would say to you don't be frightened to pop on that mask even you know post-covid um neck pillows are another thing that we travel with uh, if we're going on international travel is taking a neck pillow making sure that we've got something um, even just even the wee lumber pillows as well and just making sure that you have you know ample time for boarding you can get priority disabled boarding there's not much time for that I think I might, I think I might get a neck pillow actually for in the doodle bag oh, do you not have one? Hubby about, no I have a lumber um, yeah. cushion you know seat uh, thing yeah the wee round ones yeah uh huh the memory foam and then obviously you've got the cut out having you for for the the um mm-hmm. like the coccyx area mm-hmm. so yeah I couldn't travel without that um but yeah no no neck pillow and it's funny we were looking at when um a couple of weeks when I was looking at the tilly hats mm-hmm. um in go outdoors um and I I did say to to hubby about get getting one and um now you've mentioned yeah. again. I I shall do so actually because I think it would be um would be of some help because I don't know about other people but my head often feels too heavy for, for my neck well, uh, to, yeah. try, to try and hold my, my you know my head up well I was just going um, to say to you Lindsay I use it sometimes backwards so that I don't put it behind my neck sometimes I put it over my intent. chin and hold it yeah we, we we have neck pillows in the car all the time 
Um, and we find that, you know, I find some days when I'm incredibly tired, like you're saying, with this neck. And actually, it could bring us to tears, haven't we? We've spoken about that, how it can bring us to tears. So, yeah, Lindsay, I mean, I think there's there's loads that, you know, I, I'm thinking just to try and if there's anyone that is is thinking, oh, I'm really anxious about going abroad. I'll tell you what I'm very anxious about before um, we kind of flip the script to something else um, is at my vestibular uh, physio appointment, I'm really anxious with regards to flying because of my ears. Um, yeah. I'm, I am. And that's actually one of the, well, that and we, you know, um, it's going to be an extra long flight if we were thinking of heading over to Japan. Um, I really want to go back to France, but where I've been physically this last wee while, it's, you know, holidaying in the UK is, is going to be enough. It's going to be, you know, the journey is going to be enough for us. Um, so we want to be able to enjoy it without me being burnt out and being a, a kind of needing a lot of care. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, before mm-hmm. before chatting about the the holidaying in the the UK, um, how do people manage with regards to flying, etc.? Like just just thinking out loud with regards to this disease because um you know spasms are, mm-hmm. are a thing for, for for me and when we talk about barriers and things that would you know potentially stop us from from traveling um you know fatigue is one thing sensitivity to noise and change of temperature that's that's another thing but what happens if you spasm on a plane yeah or um, a boat or mm. you know that 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 um that fear aspect of because when your whole body goes it it goes and you need the the length of however tall you are yes. and then how your body you know um shifts and 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 contorts itself and mm-hmm. you know all that kind of thing how how does one deal with that on a plane for instance on the weekend you know on sunday um, I, I had a little bit of a spasm on the stairs. Mm-hmm. Now, that in itself, so I mean, that puts you in one of the most dangerous places yeah. that, that there are, really. Um, so thinking of a confined space, because stairs, you know, they, they aren't wide, are they? Yes, they're long, but then they're, they're not wide. H- how would somebody deal with that? And I think it's, it's a very rational thought to have mm-hmm. of, okay, if this were to happen... What would we do? Exactly. Because there's there's a difference. It lasts in for a few seconds or even a couple of minutes. But what happens if you have ones that, that go on for longer? Um. So I think finding other options, um, and looking at other avenues mm-hmm. and choosing places to go and see mm-hmm. and enjoy, um where you are at this present moment mm-hmm. in time in your journey because as we all know SBS it does not stay the same yeah. it is constantly chopping and changing mm-hmm. you know it's exhausting trying to keep up with the way that, yeah. it, that it changes um but you know taking positivity from that is that it does change so you know this year you may not be jetting off to sunny wherever mm-hmm. Um, but that that's not saying that you can't go, you know, as, as we chat about with, within the UK where you're able to use your, your, you know, your own vehicle, yeah. for instance. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think for me, as much as I would, I would love it. Em, mm-hmm. I would love to see the whole world, yeah, every inch of the world. Mm-hmm. I really, really would. Travel is like, it is something that I've, I've always yeah. wanted to do. Um, but you, you take the wonderful times from that in the respect of, okay, the world is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. She's there waiting for me and I will conquer her Mm -hmm. when the time is right for me. So that then takes us, as you say, into, into the UK and what's accessible here. And we have beautiful beaches and, and mountains and, you know, and, and what have you. And we do get good summers. Well, you do. (laughs) You've just been a bit boastful there, right? Okay, settle down. I think that, do you know what? I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I think another thing, though, as well, with the, this thought of being on a plane and spasming on yeah. a plane, um, is people, other people's response 
to that. So you know when you were talking about um, your breathing and if somebody were to turn around and say to you, <laughs> yeah. you know, how you would respond. I think for someone in an SPS spasm, it's not just for them, bless them, but you know the people that are with them. Mm. So whether it's their, their husband, their wife, daughter, son, whoever that is accompanying them, um, how they then deal with other people's responses out there so some can be try and be very very helpful but they go to touch you yeah. or move you or assist in any way and it just escalates the situation and i think get getting your head around how this disease is mm -hmm. and how other people may perceive it yeah. on the outside so even for instance on the weekend on the saturday we were in a shop the tannoid went off and uh -huh. that was my body gone so then, you know, you've got my hubby trying to massage and, and, yeah. and rub me down and trying to, because even like not, not just with the spasms, but the, the freeze mode that the body goes into where it just kind of, you know, it just latches onto the floor and you are in, you, you, you are a statue, yeah. you're, you're just stuck there. And those looks that you get mm -hmm. and people are, you know, they're just, I don't know. I think it's very much... I think for the person who has SPS and the way that, that they're accepting of it and they're okay with it and they can blank other people out and those stares and those mm -hmm. looks. But I think when it's very early on um, in diagnosis and you're trying to learn where yeah, this disease is yeah. and, um, you know, and I don't know that those looks and things, I think it's just an, it's an accumulation of many things for me as to why I have not booked a holiday on a plane. Put put it that way. There are lots of things that runs around in this mind of mine mm -hmm. of, is that going to serve me by trying to do that at the moment? Or is it going to cause more worry and more stress to the point to where, um, you know, SPS is, is going to feed off that. So yeah. Let's you know. Let let's just you know try try a different option, and I think it's different for all of us. And I think choose what's best for you, what will serve you, and give that very much that that well earned break that you and your yeah. body and your family are, are needing. Absolutely, and I think you know coming from that as well, Lindsay. We've been speaking about this a lot, young lady. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but is um, a mental break is just as good as a physical one. And Absolutely. I think learning to press pause is incredibly important because SPS can or any health condition can make you think that the world or even somewhere, you know, half an hour or an hour down the, the road is inaccessible. But, you know, if we lived like that, then we, we, we wouldn't live as well. So, as you say, it's about trying to find that fine balance, tinkering with where you are. So, you know, I spoke to you of, oh, listen, if anyone is listening and um, Lunana is showing in any independent cinemas, my heart, I, I was speaking to Lindsay and another beautiful soul who, who is one of our listeners. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. You know who you are. It was the most beautiful film. I've always wanted to visit Bataan. Um, I think I was about 14 when I discovered Bataan. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> Lenana is a, a way up um, high altitude. Um, so I don't think that's on the cards for me in the next year or two. So it's about being realistic, you know. But what is realistic is is going a wee bit further down south, to, right down, yes, coming down to our, our, our neighbours, the English. <laughs> Oh dear, you've got to love the, the loving relationship between the Scots and the English, haven't you? I'm sure the English will be like, how dare she? But the Scots are like, yeah, we, we're, we're aware. I, I'm not meaning any offence. It's just a typical ribbing. You're the same with the Welsh as well, aren't you? We just, it's a wee bit of friendly UK banter, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> But so we're, I'm, I'm, haul, I'm coming down to England to steal your sunshine. And I know that um, the beautiful Cornwall coast is, oh my gosh, it's an absolute I delight. I love Cornwall. Isn't it a mm. delight? And it really offered us so much uh, last year um, for a much needed holiday. Warm enough, but 
I was able to go into the cool areas in the house as well. Um, never have I loved tiled floors as much. <laughs> I was like Monty in a puddle. I'm like, just move over a bit, Monty, and try to get onto that tile there. <laughs> you know, trying to cool off. I think the um, the beaches in Cornwall oh. are, are the most spectacular. Oh, stunning. Um, in, in, the, in the UK, I think. I think they're absolutely... You know, in, in my opinion. Mm, well, clear, clear water. Yeah. Clear water. Well, they're St Andrews, Lindsay, I have to say. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, can't 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 be having that. <laughs> I'm only joking, but you know, if you go up to the the Hebrides as well, oh my gosh, it's like Barbados. The sands, um, you know, they're white and it's clear blue water, and we've thought about that. But that's a that's a far trek as well. And again, you're not guaranteed the weather up there. So you know, you're taking your summer gear. You've got your seashell bikini, but you've also got your like full winter your winter woolies winter woolies <laughs> because you just never know. But if you go to Cornwall, you're guaranteed. You know, there's a there's going to be some form of sun, but. Um, Speaking of which, Lindsay, coming back to, to the, the discussion of perhaps just travelling an hour from your door, half an hour from your front door, um, mm. just to press pause yeah. to get away from your front door can be incredibly important too. Um, because we've discussed this of SPS becoming a very isolated, enclosed world if we allow it. If we allow and it. And yeah. I always recall one of your er, conver early conversations of saying, why can't I do this, Lindsay? And the first word that you replied with when you came, you came on was fear. Fear, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, fear, you're right. But there's a reality in there as well of, you know, tr be, trying to be as, as medically stable as you can be. And yeah. spoke, yeah. I think that's where, yeah, I, I need to be careful with myself there because it's not fear. No. The reason why I don't fly, the fear is right now, mm -hmm. you know, being realistic with my capabilities and being accepting of that. So it's not that I'm a gibbering wreck oh, and no, that I'm scared no. to, to do these things. It's that, you know, it's, it's taking the obstacles and saying, OK, this is very real right now. Mm -hmm. um, would it be safe? Is it wise? Um, you know, and, and I it is safe for me yeah. in, in respect to, to be able to fly in things. But, you know, where would I, I assume that it's safe for me, um, where, where would that leave me mm -hmm. um, spasm wise? Everything else, you know, it's you just you work through. But that part when the body just goes out straight, you know, or, the, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. back arches or what, I just I, I cannot see how that can be dealt with on a plane when you know, it's, it's almost impossible on the States. I, I think it's just, you, you weigh it out. You do. You? And can I, um, can I just interject just very quickly, sorry, my friend, Yeah. is to say um, when I was relating to fear, I did not mean yourself. When I, I'm sat across from one of the most courageous, determined oh. women, <laughs> um, you know, you speak to you on a Wednesday, Thursday, and you can hardly talk from the spasms in your throat. And, you know, you're having a rough time. And then I get a picture on a Friday evening or a Saturday and you're out in the doodle bug. And I'm like, now there goes, there goes Lady Courage. <laughs> there goes Lady Courage. Um, so I just want to make that clear. The other thing as well, Lindsay, if you don't mind, I mean, you've spoken about this openly, is, is the rationality of that you're unmedicated. So you don't have anything to help settle those spasms down. So there, yeah. there will be other people, and, and we know one very courageous family who are embarking upon a, you know, a journey. Oh, I'm so excited for them. I, they so need this. I am in <laughs> awe of their courage. When I heard that yesterday, I thought, right, come on, come on, Em. It, you know, yeah, th this is... But yeah. there, there is medication in there place is medication. that can get this particular person from where they are to, to you yeah. know, to, on that flight and, and to yeah. where they're going in a safe manner. Yeah. It's just like you say, there is, n I, I, there is nothing. I'm taking vitamins, my friend, vitamins. And when I, I had that reaction to this week, when we were talking about food allergies yeah. earlier, and I was, I was thinking, my stomach is in shreds. Yeah from just that one changeover of vitamin yeah. and it's all organic, no fillers, no binders, yeah. you know? So yeah, but 
completely completely unmedicated yeah so. and you know upon speaking to the vestibular physio i said to her you know i, I I'm, I'm apprehensive and she's like well you know um there is nothing to say that none of the doctors are saying that you cannot fly with this but you would need a dizzy contingency plan um, yeah. And that feels that that's for the fear for me is so it's not so much the fatigue's frightening. And um, I, know, I know we had this conversation yesterday um, of and my husband is very realistic when he's he said, when we do that long haul flight, you're in business class or first class. And I'm like, I can't swan you on up to first class and you're all back there, um, you know, because where we are going it would be incredibly expensive at the moment we're talking over i think it was about twelve thousand pounds just for the flights alone at the moment so and that's not first class and i'm like i can't swan you on up there and be lying out and be like lady muck and know that you guys are back there and you know i you know, my baby heart couldn't cope with that but he's oh, like yeah but you have to be realistic because um mm -hmm. when you get to the other end you know you need to be well rested you need to be well rested. Do you know, do you know what, Em? Um, you were saying that with um, with your... Oh, I, I love your husband to death. You know that. He's but all for right. Him to turn can, a, yeah, he's but okay. for, for him to turn around <laughs> he's and our say... Editor, so have... um, be, <laughs> be realistic. And where mine would turn around and say the same, my hackles go up because I think, who are you? Oh. <laughs> who are you? Who are you? <laughs> to um to tell me to be realistic it isn't it funny that trying to take that on board from someone else i still after 12 years of being diagnosed mm -hmm. with this disease i still become defensive uh... see that's on me that's that's on me it's not on anybody else that's my issue but i do become defensive if if someone says you know to be realistic or uh -huh. um kind of like um chat to me about my capabilities or what's safe for me and what isn't or something yeah. like why what you know what point am I going to get to where I'm okay for other people to address me about it <laughs> again again have you heard this before that you're very hard on yourself you, uh, you yes, know yes. if people haven't listened to your personal journeys and that's a synopsis that's not all that encapsulates your your journey. You're too hard on yourself. You're still trying. You're still coming through a lot, Lindsay, and you're you're facing it head on, girl. And you are doing it with a tremendous amount of courage and determination. I think part of that I can resonate with. You know when um. Like with the driving um, a couple of weeks ago and a family member said, you're not driving that big car, are you? And I was like, oh. you know, I took my confidence away. I was like, I was doing all right there. I was doing all right. Oh, and and it, it's just, con <laughs> no, that's just concern. It was just concern, but it, it took my confidence away, you know? So it, it's funny, you know, when somebody questions your capabilities or, or to, you know, it, it, you can become a wee bit, def I don't think it's defensive. I think it's because you still want to be you, you know, and we hear of like people in their 80s who say, my body's older, but I'm still 20 in my mind. Oh, my granddad you see? says that. So I think yeah. that, you know, there has to be a recognition of that as well. So don't be so hard on yourself. And I think being unmedicated with those spasms, it, for me, I mean, to, to think of how, how would I be feeling in that situation? I don't know if I'd be as courageous as yourself, you know? Um, so stop being so hard on yourself is, that's the lesson again today. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, li I'm listening. Are you listening? Then, listening? Good, good. Do you know what I do want to do though? And hubby and I, we discuss this probably every weekend. <laughs> that we sat on the mountain with our with our coffee um catching up on on our week together and just having some lovely time is i so 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 want to purchase a camper van yeah. and travel the uk i so want to do that and the reality of being able to do that is actually you know it's doable yeah. because you know like happy says that the bed would be back mm -hmm. there and you would be able to to rest mm -hmm. and we will be able to keep the vehicle still when you need mm -hmm. to be still and silent when you need to be silent 
and I am holding on to that. I've, I've yeah. got to be honest. And I often say to him, you know, about um, working from a laptop to be able to do that mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, be stationary in an office or what, what you know, whatever he's, you know, he's doing at, at, mm -hmm. at the moment, career wise. Um, because this is another thing with, with regards to, to SPS and, and this will probably be another podcast actually of our ability to be able to work or not be able to work and how we deal with that. So let's just leave that where, where it is for yeah. now, because otherwise I think we'll be there all day, but, um, to be able to, you know, to be able to work from, from a, from a laptop and, and, and travel, um, the UK, I would just. I, I would love I would yeah. love that I really 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 would um, I would love for you to go over to France you know my love affair oh, with I France mean, Viva I la France know, know. my love we, affair we had, we had organized um, a, a road trip to France over two years ago yeah. <laughs> it's still not um, it will come in, into fruition because Another thing with this traveling and being out and out and about, even though you and I, we have spoke a lot of planning, contingency plans, all that kind of thing through this podcast. One of the things I don't have the luxury of doing is actually planning a trip as in booking a mm -hmm. date. And then, you know, I'm working up to that because I never know what I'm going to be capable of from one yeah. day to the next. And that is a tricky thing for me. So where you and I, we have spoke, this will be the third, the third podcast where we mm -hmm. mentioned shepherd's hut. a cabin, a little shepherd's <laughs> hut, something. A button bin. <laughs> um, and I have looked again this week Good. thinking, will I be able to do it this weekend? Because my hubby's got one more day to take off. So he's off Monday as well. Um, so yeah, so he'll be home Friday evening. So maybe we can do like the Saturday, Sunday evenings. But when I started looking Monday and I wasn't feeling quite well, and by yesterday, those issues with my stomach and my heart and my little brain and things. Um, and then when I spoke to you and I said, you know, Em, I think is this, this vitamin, yeah. like that's how sensitive my body is. So I was up all night last night with my stomach in shreds thinking, Am I going to be okay mm -hmm. to to be able to, to you know to to be able to commit to that this weekend? So even something like that, um, and as you know, as you just you know you you've openly said that probably by tomorrow and possibly Friday as well, my lungs will be having a little bit of a struggle and my throat will be having a little bit of a struggle from all the talking and mm -hmm. being sat up and and communicating and things. Um, and we had a busy day yesterday with our book club, which we will share on oh, note, to be, um, as we approach as we approach oh, the end. Yeah. But yeah, what you know, shall I shan't I this weekend? And when we talk of finances, mm -hmm. you know, it's very real. You and I, we we often have this mm -hmm. chat about mm -hmm. about finances. I think it's the same for everyone right oh, now, yeah. the way the economy is. But it's an investment in one's health, this which is often is something that M, yeah, M says to me over and over and over. And she's like, my darling, even if it's only half an hour away mm -hmm. from, from home and it doesn't have to be anything extravagant that costs the earth, invest in yourself, invest in your health. Yeah, let me tell you this, okay? <laughs> let me tell you this, <laughs> Missy. You sit back and listen to me. <laughs> Let me tell you this, that when we speak of travel, and this is not to be boastful, this is to be very realistic and raw, my hubby and I are the most simpli simplistic, easy to please people in the world. And I will tell you this, I have stayed in, in Tokyo, you know, one of the most expensive hotels in Tokyo, where you know, you, we were living it like um, beyond Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman. Now, what did I get from that hotel? I got a bath and my head on a pillow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we then went to, now this, we were speaking of this last night. We then went to, um, to traveled up to Kyoto to one of the oldest inns in uh, Japan, because you know, they, they obviously they have lots of earthquakes and it was rickety stairs. Thank goodness I didn't have the vestibular I said to you. It was like Harry <laughs> Potter. It, I mean, it was my vestibular in reality now, you know. 
and it was the best night's sleep we had. They had antique, uh, antiques in the room. I had young kids, the sweat was dripping from me. I'm like, don't, just don't go over there. Please don't. My husband's looking, he's like, oh my gosh, that's a couple of hundred years old. I'm like, why have they put us in this room? He's like, well, there's only three rooms in here. And I'm like, oh my Lord, can we move them? He's like, don't touch them. You know, <laughs> so that was the biggest sweat. We slept on futons. We were weary after travelling the delights of Kyoto, absolutely stunning, very, very busy, very, very warm, and it was the best night sleep we had. So when it comes to, you know, worrying about, there are some people who, they're travel snobs, right? I, I, they, I'm calling a spade a spade. I, I honestly, I, I'm... I'm not in for all of that. I, as I say, my, my parents very much provided well for us and we stayed in some of the most wonderful hotels where footballers and all famous golfers and actors and what have you would cross your, you know, cross your path. Do I recall any of that other than jumping in a pool and having to wear a t-shirt over my bathing costume because I was a Scot and I burnt? <laughs> And if I tried to, and I would I'd jump in there, I'd be a big bubble at the back of my t-shirt. <laughs> and there was all these wee, you know, kids that could take the sun who were just diving in without coming up <laughs> with the vacuum, you know. They could go under the water for a few seconds, <laughs> just bounced up with a buoyancy aid. But I can tell you that for me, all I need is somewhere clean, somewhere with water, warm water and cold. A kettle, because I'm a tea jenny, I need my tea, and somewhere clean to lay my head. And that that's it. So it doesn't matter if you are, um, you know, going to the finest hotel or caravanning. Do you know what it doesn't we, matter. we thoroughly enjoy is um, we, we have this little orange tent, a four-man I was just going to mention tents, and, yeah. Yeah, and do you, do you know we... we um, I mean, you know, we had the most beautiful mountains. Oh, um, Scotland is stunning, I know. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, Wales, she oh, has some, some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mountains. And there's this one, um, Hay, Hay Bluff. And we take our, our little orange tent um, and my little my little portaloo and, and, you know, the camp stove and all the little bits and pieces. And we're set for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't stay. You, you know, you don't stay overnight there. Um, it's not permitted, but you're allowed to like pitch mm -hmm. up through through the day, and it's just. Do you know what it just? You know when you say press pause, mm -hmm. I just I feel so rejuvenated and alive. Once I have just, we take the picnic blanket. We take we each take our book. Um, you know we, we try and coax our our daughter to come with us, but she's like, Mum, really? Why do you want to be on top of the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> she's like where's the hotel bookings gone you know that kind of thing but um you know so it, yeah it's generally just just us with our books um no wi-fi no Perfect. connection to the outside world just being and the views are stunning and you know you know there's horses and birds and just all the wonderful things yeah. and that that is enough um sometimes just to feel that you've actually gone on a break absolutely had a break. I, I you know, yeah so. I, I think sometimes if we measure up to the ways of the world we, we can it can I don't mean that you or I do that Lindsay but some people can think oh you know is that okay I'm telling you if there is a clean bed there are there's somewhere clean safe and has running water you can have a really restful break and it takes me back to this this film that we went to see as I said to you I've always wanted to visit Bhutan I could not walk out of that cinema because I was in floods of tears um because of the simplicity <laughs> of yeah. the the people up in this mountainous area where you know it, the, I mean if you go on YouTube etc there was nothing romantic about this movie it was a film it was very raw and realistic and the reason that I, I was in floods of tears was because how simple life can be and how people can be so happy with their lot um, and how man can survive um, on so little and be so replenished actually with less in their lives than, than with 
more of the, the refineries of life. And I said to you, you know, my, I had very strong opinions of modernity has really had a massive impact upon how man lives and, um, you know, how how difficult it can be for some. I'm not being, I'm not being judgmental because everyone can live it as they like, but how modernity can set the standards for some people, particularly people who are in a lower wage and they feel, oh, you know, there's other people going off and doing all these things and here I am in my wee humble abode, but you can have a much more restful, and I say that from experience, we, we, when my children were younger it was caravan holidays they loved mm. them they absolutely loved them but uh, as I say not to offend anyone but what I, I am trying to say is sometimes we put barriers up of you know is it okay you know like when people because the, you know the climate is hard and a hol holidays are a luxury at the moment they, they you are. know yes so yeah. you know simple sometimes simple sometimes tense they're great they're, they're absolutely great you're grounded you're one with nature you're away from the noise the pollution you know so mm -hmm. tick all those boxes you know if those are the things absolutely. that are your triggers the other thing i was going to say to you Lindsay, was because of sps um we have what we did with our, our we're going back to this beautiful place um, that we, we visited last year in Cornwall, we just popped down a very small deposit. So we didn't pay the holiday in full because I, was, I wasn't I was sure where I was going to be with my health. Yeah. So, you know, if you're worried about that, you can pop the deposit down and a small deposit. And therefore, if things don't go that your way or they're not looking favourable, you're not losing the full amount. You're not losing a lot. There's yeah. so many ways yeah. around it, sweetheart. But... As you say, there's got to be that realistic of when it serves you as well, you know, mm -hmm. and, and um, not be feeling pressurised like someone like me. You've got to go on holiday, Lindsay. You've got to... <laughs> <laughs> I too, I too, you know. So I don't know. I think we've covered a lot today. I think we've tried to prevent the McAllister situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know be prepared friend. be prepared, be prepared. um <laughs> playing oh do you know i don't know if you did you ever watch absolutely fabulous with, oh years with ago. eddie and patsy and they're going on holiday and um sevy is it sevy that's her her daughter and she's like have you got the ticket have you got the tickets and the next minute eddie and she's like, of course i've got the tickets darling and then she runs back in to them she's like tickets money passport tickets money passport <laughs> <laughs> don't do that you know i think everybody scrambles for their passports in the 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 um the uh airport don't they they're like oh my gosh have i brought this have i not brought this <laughs> so trying to just be prepared but health wise if it's not abroad if it's not managing even an overnight trying to get a day a day out um yeah. just press pause get away from your front doors realize what you're capable of you know set realistic goals do you know do you know what though you actually saying that of you know of getting away from your front door we have even scaled it right back to a point of a staycation yeah so i said to you uh, i can't remember it wasn't so long ago that hubby had said to me okay let's get the sheets out let's make a tent mm -hmm. over the bed let's make a den and we'll put the um the telly on the tablet yeah. mm -hmm. uh, not the telly the the fire sorry mm -hmm. on on the tablet so we had like a makeshift <laughs> a makeshift yeah. um fire and and we're in a den and you know those um oh the the little the the marshmallow burners oh, what the s'mores the yeah. yes there's the s'mores you know you can do those indoors mm -hmm. you know so wherever you are in your SPS journey there's always a way to have a little break, even yeah. if you're not even leaving your home until you, you know, you're feeling a little, a little bit stronger, better treatments kicking in or whatever, yeah. or you're learning, you know, you get to grips with this disease, you know, and then you will find you moving forward and you're doing more things again, you know, with regards to holidays or going out. Yeah. Or, you, you know, it will come, it will all sort itself out. But there's, there's, there's always a little bit of happiness and joy to, there is. to pull out. And, and always. Yeah, and always. you know, COVID taught us one thing was with 
you know, with, with my children, we got the tent out, we popped it up, Monty went into the tent, they had torches, um, some of them were older, older teenagers, they had their snacks, they had iPad. I know that's, that's kind of glamping, isn't it, iPads, and they, they loved that, I think it, yeah. we forget when if we go back to our own childhood, allow kids to have their own imagination. We had mm-hmm. outdoor cinemas, you know, so yeah. we had all of that during COVID. Um, popcorn doesn't have to be all the expensive, you know, crisps or anything like that. You get popcorn in a pot, um, a pound, does it, you know? And they had outdoor cinemas, but we got the tent up. And they they were, you know, they were out there sleeping in um, and then popping in for the toilet and what have you. But, you know, so as parents as well, I think sometimes with SPS, we feel a great need to to give and and, and outpour of ourselves and exhaust ourselves. If that's not on the cards this year, if you're not feeling great and you think, oh, L&M, these are all great ideas. But listen, you've no idea where I am at the moment. I can barely draw breath. Just yeah, allow your yeah. kids to, to to use their imagination. They are it's a shame that a lot of children have, have become more involved with devices, etc. And they're they're missing out in these kind of uh you know, their their gross motor skills, etc. of climbing trees and being out and making potions and mud kitchens and, and all those things. And even the older teenagers, you know, just saying, right there you are, sin bin with your devices, there's a tent, get out there. <laughs> yeah, and do your go thing. And, go and rough it out there <laughs> for an hour or two and see what it was like when we were young and had to entertain ourselves. So we've discussed lots. We've discussed insurance. We've discussed trying to, you know, compartmentalise packing. We've spoken about being immunocompromised and having rescue medications the other thing the last thing as well is if you're now i know this from personal experience oh god god bless my family if you're in if you're coming up north or very much you know we're coming down south chasing the sun and um, you can temporarily register with a gp so you can actually just go to the nearest gp um or out of our service um if you're not feeling too well or if you've not got antibiotics and you're feeling a wee bit off color you can temp- temporarily register with a gp I didn't know see that. there you go i didn't yeah and there we go. I, i've learned something new yeah i was treated with great care they actually said to me don't come in um because there's lots of people with croup etc rsv stay outside and we'll come and get you oh, fabulous. yeah so they were incredibly um they were incredibly helpful so I think we have um we've discussed lots today and I hope that it's covered some things of of our experiences and 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 how to prepare and I'm really praying next time I'm praying not with any pressure but just because I love my friends so much and and our hubby um who's teaching me the Welsh (laughs) the Welsh accent um I love his doomy gloomy Thank you so much for that. I'm practicing it. How's it sounding? I know he's out there in the road. Am I close? Am I close to the accent? Um, uh, so I, I think we'll sign off for today. Yes, shall we? Yes, yeah. we shall. Oh, just one other thing, though, of Ventures New. Mm-hmm. Um, as girlies, we started our book club yesterday. Yeah. So just saying, you know, um, never be afraid to, to branch out, start something new have a laugh, you know, invest in yourself, time, friendships, um, I think is, is wonderful. I never in a million years did I think um, that we would be doing all the things that, that we're doing. And it, it is, you know, I know we say about too much technology and things, but I am very grateful that it's available because it kept us connected oh, yesterday. Us. And um, yeah, absolutely to, you know, to be able to do the, the book club. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep you updated, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe start one of your own. And can I just say, yeah. with regards to devices, look, I am a couch potato. I'm going to say it to you. I am an armchair detective. I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my best to be all out there in nature, and I'm really doing my best. But, you know, these devices have served as well. I'm just talking about teenagers that are a bit like, oh god well what are we going to do and you're like well get out there and get some fresh air and move your legs maybe that's what you could do <laughs> that's not speaking about my own <laughs> kids honestly they're great they, they're absolutely they, they are outdoor boys I'm so happy they're outdoor boys 
I'm lucky that way. But they do, you know, they're still wanting on the switch and whatever it is that they have. And that's normal life. Let life flow, you know, especially if you've got kids and and they're, they're, they've got a parent with an SPS in the house or other health things. You know, you, you have to kind of just go with the flow as well and be gentle yes, with them yeah. and know that, you know, they're, they are of a different era, but they can still get their shoes off and get outdoors as well, you know, and hang a bit of washing up while they're out there. <laughs> Learn, <laughs> yeah, there's the OT in me. Learn them life skills. Right, we're, we're ready to go off on a tangent and we've been warned no more of those lengthy... <laughs> It's lengthy podcasts you do. You forget your recording. Um, so with lots of love in hope and hoping, please share with us if you've got plans for your travels. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Interact with us. Come, you know, chat away. We're, as Lindsay said, we're a friendly bunch. Um, we're a friendly there, bunch. There's, Indeed we are. Yeah, and there's no <laughs> judgment or anything. We love a good laugh and we also love to hear other people's opinions and, and what other people are doing. Um, so, and to leave on the note then, it was International Forest Day yesterday. Here's a wee bit of advice. Go out and have some forest bathing, even if it's in your garden. Absolutely. There you... I was out tree hugging on the weekend. Yeah. I was. Yeah, it's amazing. Was. It's amazing. It's on your front door, mm -hmm. um, or as you say, you know, having some plants. And there. it's free. It's free. It's free. Absolutely. And as I'm going to end in one last Billy Conley joke. My, this brought my son to my knees. I'm in five percent, by the way, um, on one of my devices, so I'll keep it quick. Speaking of which, I actually said to Lindsay, "Typical Scott, start off slow, going fast. Are you listening to me in slow mo? Possible." <laughs> I was possibly thinking that, but um, when you were talking about three, Scots are not tight. Can I just make that very, very clear? But Billy Conley made a fantastic joke. Um, he said that copper wire was discovered, um, was invented by two Scotsmen fighting over a penny. And uh, my, my first son was like, that's brilliant. And I was like, yeah, but I love that's them. great. But it's not true. It's not true. We, we're in a friendly oh, bunch. Okay. Come and visit us. <laughs> Bring your sunshine, come and visit us. But whatever you're doing today, have a blessed day. Have a, you know, a wonderful day. If it's a difficult day, then find some moments to pause um, and be very gentle with yourself. Tap into that self-care toolbox. And if, you know, if anything, you know, find us on Facebook, Instagram or, you know, uh, tune into another podcast. It might help with insomnia. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> with lots of love from your yes, verbal life, everyone. lots of love <laughs> until next time ta-ta for now <laughs> thank you for listening to today's episode we would love to hear from you you can find us on Facebook SPS Unscripted Podcast if you would prefer to DM us privately then do so with the Facebook Messenger app we're also over on Instagram, SPS Unscripted Podcast One, all one word. A gentle reminder, we are not medical professionals. This content is reflective of personal journeys where we follow advice from our medical teams and we strongly advise that you always consult your medical professional for advice. <laughs>